Yes, everybody, it's time now for Let's Talk College Football. Nothing but college football. Yes, a new intro to the show as we get ready to talk about the week that was and the week coming up, which will be the week of September the 24th and some more marquee games coming up. But first, we got to talk about the week that was, and we'll begin the Big 12 with thumbs up and thumbs down. And by the way, we are doing away with thumbs off, okay, by request. No more thumbs off. So basically, if I don't talk about a Big 12 team, it's either because they did what we thought they were going to do, win or lose, or they didn't play that week. So let's go ahead and begin with thumbs up, which will be pretty limited this week. Thumbs up to the Oklahoma State Cowboys. Yeah, they were favorites against Pittsburgh, but this was really a game we thought that would be seesaw. It would be a high-scoring game, and that's exactly what it was. Cowboys, James Washington was the biggest Cowboy of all. Nearly 300 yards receiving for the game. How about that? And the Cowboys win over the Pittsburgh Panthers. Now for thumbs down. We know Ohio State's a damn good team. That much has been established. But the Sooners didn't help themselves in this game either. Some inconsistency on special teams with the missed field goal. As well as a bad punt which set up the Buckeyes first touchdown. Defense gave up way too many rushing yards. And the offense, Baker Mayfield, it was not one of his best days. Didn't throw very well and gave up a few sacks as well. And got to talk about the Texas Longhorns. Normally, 43 points would be good enough to win on the road, but your defense can't give up half a hundred despite no Jared Goff. The Bears still were a nemesis to the Longhorns' defense as Cal pulls up the upset against previously unbeaten Texas. Now, good, bad, and the ugly will begin with the good, and for the most part, it was a good day for the Big Ten. Ohio State, who says that this year is a rebuilding season, despite 16 new starters? Yeah, the Buckeyes look like a veteran team, well-polished, and of course, the day that Noah Brown had with four touchdowns, and Ohio State's convincing win in Norman against my Sooners. Speaking of what we thought was going to be a rebuilding job, yeah, Michigan State, uh-huh. I remember I picked them to go to the college football playoff, once again, of course, who knows if that's going to happen, but at least early on, Spartans aren't going anywhere. They go to South Bend and get a big win over Notre Dame. Now, when your offense and defense are performing at their best, it helps if your punt return team can come up with some big plays. Well, kudos to Jim Harbaugh's Michigan Wolverines. It was vital, blocking one punt for a touchdown and returning a punt for a score thanks to Jabril Peppers, the All-American. Michigan comes from behind thanks to special teams and beats Colorado. And Mike Riley, well, you had to really feel for him when he was at Oregon State. He could never seem to beat Oregon in the Civil War. Well, now as head coach of the Huskers in year two, facing Oregon, non-conference this time, Riley got it right, and Nebraska's off to a 3-0 start as Mike Riley's team gets a win over his former head rivals from Eugene, Oregon. And we can't forget about the Louisville Cardinals. Boy, I tell you, scoring over 60 points. I mean, who, who would have thought that? And once again, Lamar Jackson. We talked about him previously on the show, and he's worth another mention. He definitely, as of right now, is a big-time Heisman Trophy candidate. And Louisville absolutely embarrasses Florida State. Ole Miss, what is it going to take for them to hold on to a lead? Maybe they're just not in great physical shape. Remember, they had a 22-point lead against Florida State earlier in the year in Orlando and got beat. Well, even though it's against Alabama, Ole Miss looked good early on, winning by as many as 21, only to see their lead disappear. And you can guess the result. Another loss for Hugh Freeze's Rebels. And we mentioned Florida State. When was the last time they gave up over 60 points to anybody? Yeah, I, I can't think of a time either. Jimbo Fisher's team was ranked pretty high, but not anymore after the Seminoles get thumped by Louisville. And when North Dakota State hits you in the eye like a big pizza pie, it's not exactly a moray. In fact, it sucks. Iowa's 14-game regular season winning streak came to a halt last Saturday, courtesy of NDSU. 
And this to me was just flat out stupid. I mean, really? Yeah, we know Oregon goes for two after they score their first touchdown of the game. But then they keep going for two, and then they can't make one after making their first. That's right, they missed four straight two-point conversions and bit them in the ass in the end because they lost a close game, a three-point decision, courtesy of Nebraska. And now for the ugly, and this might be the ugly for the year, the ugly for all times. What in the hell is Penn State thinking? Having a ceremony last week to honor Joe Paterno during the Temple-Penn State game? Are you serious? Do, do people at State College PA have amnesia? Do they not know what Paterno is all about? Yeah, you might be thinking, well, he's about winning. Well, he's also, too, about not taking a stand for those who didn't have a voice, who were defenseless. We're talking about all those boys that were sexually molested, whose lives were ruined forever by Jerry Zandusky. Paterno may not have been the one who did it, but Paterno had an opportunity to take what he knew which he knew Zendesky was a monster, and take it to a much higher authority and take a stand for those boys. He chose the easy way out and put winning ahead of the human race. And Penn State's going to honor this guy. <sighs> what in the hell are the Nittany Lions thinking? It is a difficult transition to go from that story to the picks, but we're going to end the show on a positive note. And this past week, boy, talk about positive. Won four out of my five games. The only one I lost was Georgia, who came from behind to defeat Missouri. But keep in mind, the Bulldogs were a six-and-a-half-point favorite. Did not cover. So I lost that one. But the other four, victorious. K-State with an easy win over Florida Atlantic. Michigan State not only covers the spread against Notre Dame, but for good measure wins the game too as an underdog. Oklahoma State needed a backdoor cover, a touchdown in the final few minutes to edge out Pittsburgh by seven. Remember, the Cowboys were favored by six and a half, so I barely won that one. Texas Tech, Louisiana Tech, both teams didn't play a lick of defense, and that helped me because I thought that it would be over on the total, which was 80, and that's exactly what happened. So, see if we can keep the streak going as far as having winning weeks, which if I could do it again, I'd make it two weeks in a row. Hey, got to celebrate when you have the chance. Okay, everybody, it is time now for my picks for this week. Let's see if we can do it again, okay? Wisconsin at Michigan State, two teams with already marquee wins on the docket. Of course, the Badgers beat LSU in the opener, and just recently Michigan State pulled off the upset at Notre Dame against the Fighting Irish. Think two big things about this game I like for the Spartans. Number one, playing at home. But number two, even though their offense isn't maybe a juggernaut like some of the other offenses in college football, it's better than Wisconsin's. The Badgers, despite being undefeated, have had their struggles on the offensive side. So I think this plays well into the hands of Sparty. I look for Michigan State to cover the five and a half. Oklahoma State against Baylor. Bears are favored by more than a touchdown to win, but to me, the intriguing number is the total, 73 and a half, and I don't think either of these defenses are worth a damn. I think Oklahoma State defensively has had problems, and Baylor, I'll tell you what, it's a different defensive line. I don't think they're going to get much of a pass rush at all unless they blitz against Mason Rudolph, and I think Rudolph can pick him apart. Baylor probably wins the game, but to me, the intriguing number again is the total at 73.5, and I think this game is going to exceed that. So I'm going to go with the over on the total between the Cowboys and Bears. You got Florida against Tennessee, and I know the balls haven't always looked the part of a top 15, top 20 team. But when they want to rise to the occasion, which they did against Virginia Tech, they came through after the slow start. I think Tennessee, for right now, until proven otherwise, will play to the level of their competition. And I think this game with Tennessee as a six-and-a-half point favorite tells me that Vegas thinks that the home field advantage will make a difference and also, too, that the Gators' offense still, at times, isn't always proficient. So I look for Tennessee at home to cover the six-and-a-half. You got Arkansas versus A&M at Jerry's World in Arlington. And you have a couple of teams that right now are undefeated, okay? This is a, this is a primetime matchup from Arlington, and these games are typically close between these two teams, um, and they've been known to go to an overtime here and there. So will A&M win this game? Possibly. But six and a half, I think, in this case, a little too much for my blood, so I'm going to say the Razorbacks to cover 
the six and a half. And finally, you have Cal against Arizona State. The Golden Bears coming off an emotional win over Texas, a thriller. But now they got to go on the road the following week in a conference game against the Arizona State team that right now might be a little bit on the undervalued side. And I think this will be a high-scoring game, but I look for Arizona State at home and with their offense to be too much for Cal, who despite winning the week before against Texas, still gave up 43 points. So I'm going to take the Sun Devils as the favorite. And I'll give the points, which is minus four. Those are my five selections for this week, the week ending September 24th. Sorry we got the picks on late, but we want to make sure we got them in. And, of course, I'll have my weekly matchup show of Oklahoma football coming up the week of October 1st, probably Tuesday or Wednesday, as the Sooners will get ready for the Big 12 opener against Texas Christian. Thanks for watching.